As I predicted yesterday, the National Hurricane Center is now forecasting Invest 95L to have a high chance of developing into a tropical cyclone within the next seven days where we have a 70% chance now um, extending all the way towards the Leeward Islands. So Leeward Islands, you definitely need to watch out for the potential of tropical storm impacts by the, by the beginning or middle part of next week. Um, where this storm should continue to intensify as majority of the computer models have been agreeing that we're going to see a tropical storm, especially um, more likely closer to um, develop closer to the Caribbean. And it seems like um, the computer model, and I only expect the chance to get higher than the 70% chance over the next um, several days. So the Caribbean, definitely watch out for potential impacts. But there's several factors we need to take a look at to see how strong this will get and if it'll, uh, and if it'll directly impact you guys because there's still that possibility it could move just north of the Caribbean islands. We're going to take a look at that um, to really um, determine if um, whether or not you're going to ex experience major impacts and there's a possibility this could develop into a hurricane and we also have three other tropical disturbances right now but they're they're likely to dissipate in the near future and not really bring much of any impacts to land so in this video I'm mainly going to focus on invest 95l so here's a quick look at the water vapor imagery for Invest 95L and the good news is is that we are seeing a lot less convection um, compared to yesterday because yesterday right over Africa we were seeing a huge blow up of thunderstorm activity that has subsided once um, this moved off of the African coast which is typically common for a lot of tropical cyclones they typically lose a lot of their steam by the time they approach the main development region before potentially regaining it once it encounters the very warm sea surf temperatures further westward in the main development region. Um, so right now there isn't a lot of convection and we do see it's sort of lopsided. We don't see convection on all sides. The center of circulation is right here. And this and the good news is that since it's lopsided, this is likely to slowly intensify. So it's unlikely we're going to see this rapidly intensify as this storm system continues ahead further westward and there is a possibility it could rapidly intensify closer to the Caribbean once the storm organizes itself and it becomes a little bit more symmetrical where we see convection on all sides but for right now if this were to develop into a tropical storm in the near future it'll likely remain as a weaker to mid-level tropical storm um just before it reaches the Caribbean so it won't intensify very rapidly until it's a lot further westward where conditions could become a lot more potentially become a lot more conducive because we have some of the more reliable computer models like the European model not wanting to develop this um, quite rapidly at least early on but beyond the five day mark that's when the European model wants to uh, um, pretty much make this storm undergo balmogenesis where we see the storm rapidly intensify into major hurricane status. To show you guys exactly what I'm talking about, here's a look at the European models forecast when it comes to Invest 95L. And we do see that it'll strengthen just a little bit over the main development region as it approaches the central portion, but not very rapidly because like I said, the storm will initially begin as very lopsided and there's going to be a decent amount of dry air on the eastern side which is certainly good news that will slow down its intensification early on and we do see that it mainly maintains tropical storm status like i said mid around mid-level tropical storm status and its pressure hovers around a thousand millibars but it becomes very different once this moves just to the north of the caribbean where we see the pressure drop significantly down to the 960s which is major um hurricane status at this point but at least for this scenario the good news is, is that the european model wants to steer this further northward but again take a look at the forecast hour there's 186 hours out so there's still a lot of time between now and seven days for the for the trajectory of the storm system to shift where this could potentially move a little bit further southward than anticipated how um or it we could see a better scenario where this moves a little bit further northward really all depends on the amount of ridging um but this would certainly be good news still because that would mean that the caribbean islands would avoid much of any impacts from this storm system if it were to take the northward track but still 
a very it's still too far to say for certain that this will be the case especially since if we were to take a look at the gfs model the gfs model wants to bring direct impacts right over the caribbean islands the good news is, is that with the GFS model's case, it's a much weaker storm than the European model. In the GFS model scenario, you wouldn't expect a major hurricane to move over the Caribbean islands. It is just a tropical storm moving through, but even then, that would bring heavy rainfall and the possibility of enhanced uh, an enhanced flash flood risk over much of the Caribbean islands, which would still bring um, intense impacts, especially if you live in flood prone areas. So this is definitely something to keep in mind um, of whether there's a tropical storm, a hurricane, a major hurricane, or just a regular tropical wave. This still could bring an enhanced amount of rainfall for the Caribbean islands um, by the late portion of next week. Um, but still, like I said, very far out to say for certain. The GFS model is expecting more ridging than the European model, which is um, the reason why it wants to take a track um, that brings direct impacts to the Caribbean. Um, but it's still too uncertain to say. And when it comes to the intensity forecast, we see that the reason why the GFS model is expecting this storm to be weaker is that, at least for initially, the GFS model doesn't expect this storm to be as compact. The area of moisture is a lot larger in terms of its range, and that and that typically slows down um, intensification because if a storm system is too large, and that means the energy isn't efficiently going towards one area, or there's multiple um clusters of thunderstorms that are competing for the same limited amount of air molecules to converge um over, um under their cl um cluster or at least um their envelope of moisture so if the area is too large and that would slow down intensification and that's what the gfs model is forecasting initially and of course like i said the storm will be slightly lopsided there's going to be a decent amount of dry air expected just say east of it which is the reason why at least initially we will i'll say definitely most likely we're going to see a tropical storm over this area but it might not strengthen much more than that until maybe um conditions become more favorable once this approaches uh um once this approaches the uh, leeward islands which still is uncertain because a uh, gfs model doesn't strengthen it anywhere near as much as the european model and it's mate and even though the storm does become a little bit more um, symmetrical by the time this approaches the Caribbean in the GFS model scenario, it still deals with plenty of land interaction and the wind shear significantly increases once this approaches the Caribbean. So even though the storm becomes more symmetrical, it deals it's gonna deal with another problem um, when it comes to intensification, which is land interaction and wind shear. The European model isn't expecting the wind shear to be as strong this early, and plus the European model takes a track further northwards where it avoids the Caribbean islands, which is the reason why it expects a storm to strengthen a lot more. But um, taking a look at the wind shear map um, forecasted by the um, GFS model to show you guys what I'm talking about, and you're going to see that at least initially, the storm system shouldn't experience much in terms of wind shear. There's going to be a decent amount of wind shear just to the north, but it's going to wind down, and we do see there's a nice upper level high that's just above the center of circulation that's allowing a nice outflow for the storm. It's mainly the dry air that's preventing the storm from intensifying further at least early on and we do see however the wind shear increases we see an upper level that's gonna move over florida right around the september 10th time frame and it uh the gfs model pretty much dissipates the storm there on after um thanks to the combination of land interaction on wind shear. the gf the european model is showing a different scenario however of course, another key thing we're going to keep a close eye on over the next several days when it comes to Invest 95L is the steering flows. And at least initially, the steering, the main steering flow for Invest 95L or what will likely become Chalco Storm Lee will be this ridge that's going to be located right over um, just the north of the main development region. However, eventually we're going to see a small upper level low um, build right over the western atlantic and that should allow a slight opening for this storm to move northward and eventually we see another um pretty big chop move in to, um towards eastern canada right around the september 10th 
to 11th time frame where this storm could potentially escape at around this time we're going to need to see if this trough ends up being as strong as anticipated because of course we're still very far out there's still a lot of time um, um there still could be that possibility that this low pressure system might not be as strong or the ridging might be a little bit stronger for this uh take a track further westward however it seems like the european model would lean a little bit more towards this moving out to sea at least in this scenario but it's still too far out to say if this will actually occur depending on how powerful this um trough is once it moves towards um the northeast and comparing this to what the gfs model is stating the gfs model is expecting that the ridging will be definitely a lot stronger and this trough won't be as strong and um so we see the storm move a lot further southward and bring direct impacts to the caribbean island so um definitely pay close attention to the 500 millibar height anomaly over the next um several days um pay close attention to this ridge right over invest 95 l because that will be key if it ends up being a little stronger than expected then we're more likely to see um this storm move a little bit for southward and also pay close attention to this trough um by um late next week um depending on how strong it is because those are all factors that will determine where this storm exactly will go but the caribbean definitely at least be aware of the possibility of a tropical storm moving through or even potentially um a tropical cyclone that's even stronger than that um depending on which of the computer models ends up being more correct so although the main gfs model isn't expecting this storm system to develop into a hurricane the ensemble members tell a different story where i'll say a majority of them develop this into hurricane size and we have quite a few of them wanting to take it over the lesser antilles and into the dominican republic and puerto rico which will definitely be concerning for the islands there's still that possibility you could experience a hurricane landfall we're definitely going to pay close attention to the amount of ridging the amount of dry air over the next several days um to really determine how rapidly this will intensify and if it'll bring direct impact so the caribbean definitely watch out for the possibility of um direct impacts with this storm because it's still far from certain whether the european model will be correct where it avoids you guys or the gfs model where it directly impacts you guys When it comes to the European ensemble members, the late, at least the latest run of the ensemble members from the European model, the good news is that majority of the ensemble members do want to take it just to the north of the Caribbean islands, not necessarily bringing direct impacts to um, either um, the Caribbean or the United States, maybe bringing impacts to Bermuda in the more long term future. But again, this forecast is still very uncertain at this time. The European model is bound to shift its forecast over the next several days, so we could potentially see a track for a southwards where it brings more direct impacts. And even if this doesn't necessarily directly impact the Caribbean or the United States, the storm will still be very strong right around major hurricane status. So this will still bring um, rough surf along the coast as well as a high rip curve risk. So you want to watch out for that as we approach next week. But again, just make sure to stay tuned for more updates because it's so um, far from certain if this will avoid the Caribbean islands. So pretty much like I've been saying this entire video, it's still way too far to say um, if this will bring direct impacts. Um, just um, I know I sound like a broken record, but it, I, I wish I could give you guys the answers right now. But the Caribbean still needs to be aware of the poss that at least that possibility. And even if this doesn't directly impact you guys, this could still bring rough surf as well as um, very as well as um, a high rip current risk. Um, so just stay tuned, keep watching, um, um, just stay tuned with what your local forecast is saying, as well as um, other um, forecasts um, around your area, and um, just make sure um, to at least be aware of this. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.